All right, we're doing uh, problem seven out of chapter one of Ursula Lynch's analysis. So we have a function f from x to y, and we're going to say a and b are subsets of x, c and d are subsets of y, and we want to prove the following uh, subset kind of uh, equality statements. So for a, we have to prove two, two kind of uh, things. So to prove this subset equation, so we can say uh, let x be an element of f of a uh, a union b. Uh, so, so what this means is, or maybe I'll use y here. Uh, so, so y is an element of f of a union b. So we have that y is equal to f of x for some x in a union b. So that means that y is uh, f of x for some x in a or some x in b. And if, uh, say, x is in a, then we have that y is in f of a. So namely, it'll be in f of a union f of b. But it, it, if x is not in a, if x is not in a, then x is in b, and y would then be in f of b. Namely, it will be in f of a union b, so you have this subset. Now, for the other inclusion, say we have uh, y is in f of a union f of b. Well, uh, we'll just say without loss of generality, assume... Uh, so it's either in f of a or it's in f of b. So without loss of generality, let's just assume y is in uh, f of a. So y is f of x for some x in a. But uh, that, that, that means a will also be in a union b because a is a subset of a union b. And so, so that means that y will just be in the image of uh, a union b as well, and we have both subset e equations, so we have that this is an equality. So we have that will be true. All right, let me get a new piece of paper. So for b, we just want to uh, do a single uh, direction for intersections. So uh, what we could do is we can say let y be in f of a intersect b. So what does this mean? So we have y is in equal to f of x, where x is in a intersect b. So namely, what happens, uh, so, so, so since x is in a, we ha we'll have that it is the case that uh, since x is in a and y is f of x, that means that uh, y will actually be in f of a. But similarly, since x is in b, uh, th this will imply that uh, y is in f of b. And so since it's in both, that implies that y is in f of a, intersect f of b, and we have that this subset equation is true. All right, so maybe I will run this down. And we'll do problem C. So C, we want to do another equality. So um, again, we have two uh, subsets. So let's do this one first. So we're talking about the inverse image of C, C union D. So say we have X is in the pre-image of C union D. So what does that mean? That means that, so, so this means that f of x is an element of c union d. So that means f of x is in c or f of f or f of x is in d. So if f of x is in c, then we that implies uh, that just by the definition that x is in f inverse of c. That's just by the definition. And similarly, if f of x is in d, this implies that x is in the inverse image of d. And so 
namely it'll be in one or the other because we know that f of x is either in c or in d so that implies that it has to be in the union now for the other way say that we have some x that's an element of f inverse of c union f inverse of d uh, let's just say without loss of generality we can assume that x is an element of f inverse of c well that just implies that uh, f of x is in c which is a subset of c union d and since uh, since we have that f of x is in namely an element of c union e and d this implies that x is in the inverse image of c union d and that is uh, what we wanted to show so we have both subsets so we have equality all right so maybe i'll do this so now we want to do uh, part d so again we want to do uh, inequality so we need to uh, do both inclusions so for this one uh, say that we have some element x in f inverse of c intersect d so this just implies that uh, f of x is in c intersect d but that but since it's in c intersect d it's mainly it's in c and it's in d so this implies since it's in c it implies that uh, x is in f inverse of c that's using the fact that f of x is in c but since it's also an element of d we have that x is also in f inverse of d but this is exactly what it means for x to be in f inverse of c intersect f inverse of d and for the other inclusion you can just reverse all these arrows because these are all if and only if statements because if we have an element of the intersection then it's in both then it's in both f inverse c and f inverse d but that's true if and only if the image of f x is in c and it's in d but that's if and only if uh, x is in the pre-image of the intersection so we have both there all right and so let me get a new sheet of paper and we'll do these last two so e so we want to do this subset so a is a subset of x so say that we have some element x in a we want to show that x is an element of f inverse of f of a okay uh so th this kind of just follows uh so we know uh we have that f of x is an element of f of a just by definition and then uh, what happens is since since f of x is an element of f of a and this is it going to be a subset of y so we, we can then look at what the preimage of f of a is and since f of x is in here this implies that x is an element of the preimage of f of a just by definition so this is exactly the uh, subset equation we wanted to show here now for uh, part f we want to do something very similar but now we're dealing with uh, c so uh, this will be an element in y so it, it's some subset of y so say that we have let's say an element y in f of f inverse of c so we want to show that y is actually in contained in c well since y is in f of f inverse c this implies that y is equal to f of x where x is an element of f inverse of c but what does it mean for an element to be x to be in f inverse c what that mean what that means x being an element of f inverse c that just implies that f of x is an element of c but f of x is equal to y so that just means that y is in c and that's what we wanted to show all right thanks for watching